Hey, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I'm awake, so you should be too. <laughs> so, um, I think I titled this something like Falling Down. You guys ever see that movie, Falling Down with Michael Douglas? That's been my month. <laughs> yeah, the chili dog is in town. I'm awake, so I figured I'd annoy you people. Good morning, Mr. Ron. How are you doing? Hold us in your... I'm going to look into that for you. I have, uh, I'll talk to you some more. My buddy Goldfinger. So, um, I guess I should talk. <laughs> it's been one of those months where, um, again, if you've seen the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas, you can relate. Um, I've been ready to snap about 43 different times. <laughs> And um, what's interesting is that when I first moved over here, it's, and next month is going to be mark my four-year anniversary here in the, in the Philippines, nonstop. <laughs> and uh, it's all been good for the most part, without its challenges. But this is one of those months <clears throat> where no matter what I touched, it just fell apart. And... Uh, I don't know if I should get into detail about it here and now, or if I should just make a video about it and maybe uh, put it all together succinctly. But I just kind of felt like talking to you guys because I'm lonely right now. <laughs> Maze asleep. I've been up for two hours. It's four in the morning. And uh, we'll now take some questions. <laughs> Hello there, Darren. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's my uh, pattern is go to bed early, get up early. And sometimes I go right back to sleep. And other times, um, and other times I uh, go online because I can't go back to sleep. <laughs> it's good to be here, David. It's good to be anywhere. <laughs> So I'll get into some of the shit that I've been going through if you want me to, or I'll just save it for a video. I don't know. We'll just take, we'll play it by ear because I, you know, as usual, this isn't planned. Let's see. Thanks for the comments, buddy. Hey Vegas, you know what I heard? I read something about the Win Hotel. Um, I didn't read it. I just saw the headline as usual. Um, but something about hotel break-ins that they're worried about security. So I don't know what's going on there. And another one from Las Vegas, April, Monday as usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegas has very predictable weather patterns. And um, April, May were always my favorite months as far as weather. Yeah, I get my uh, I get my ribbon. <laughs> okay, wow, Southern Wales, nice. I like your name. Let's see. Did you ever get jealous that men follow Baby May and like her checking out her bathing suits and sending likes or comments? No, I don't get jealous. I'm actually very secure in my relationship with May. May is very comfortable within her own skin. Um, I don't promote it. It's May, as you know, Goldfinger, because we've chatted a lot personally, um, is her own person. She's my little hippie chick. And um, I know other guys are tripping because their girlfriends are getting into the same thing that May. That's part of my issues this week. Uh, other guys is, other guys is, other people's girlfriends that do that do YouTube are starting YouTube channels, and they're doing the exact same thing. They're kind of following that because, uh, what is it, sex sells, and they're getting really jealous and upset. And um, to me, that's just a sign of insecurity. Now, if May was, um, I know May's character, and so she doesn't flirt with other guys. She doesn't. Whenever anybody gives her, says, hey, you look beautiful, or you this, or you're that, um, 
she just always says, thank you for watching my video and moves on. And uh, one guy wrote me that um, May had done something with his wife, talked to his wife and was saying that he was coming on to her and uh, he was going to move to Dumaguete, but now he's going to, and he's going to check out these apartments and now he's not and rah, rah, rah. And his wife's in Tampa because um, his wife was accusing him of having a flirtatious relationship with baby May. I said, May, can I see your phone? She goes, yeah, sure. So I scrolled through her messages. I said, did you ever talk to this guy? She goes, no. I go, did you ever talk to this girl? She said, no. I said, okay. And so I just scrolled through to make sure, I didn't even trust her, but I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything there on it. And sure as shit, she'd never had any contact with him. You know, there's two things that could have happened. Number one, the guy's just, you know, rattling my cage to be rattling it. Or number two, uh, we do have impersonators. If you can believe that. People have made up profiles of me and of her and have sent messages to people pretending to be me or pretending to be her just to stir the pot. That's how weird the world is. But uh, do I get jealous? No. And here's the thing. I'll just elaborate on this a little more, is I'm of the mind that if someone is unhappy with me and I'm not fulfilling a need or a want or a desire or whatever, and then they should leave and I'd get over it. And, you know, it would be horrible if that happened, but it wouldn't kill me. I mean, I'm, if I'm anything, I'm a big picture guy. You know, even my ex-wife said that. You know, to get a compliment out of my big, my ex-wife was really, phew, that was a rarity. But one thing she always did say, she says, you know what, Paul? You always draw back and look at the big picture. I've been that like that since I was a little kid. And so <clears throat> that's why I'm having this week of falling down or this month of falling down where everything I touch turns to shit. Uh, or goes wrong or gets expensive or whatever. I get frustrated and crazy in the moment. And then I just settle down and I pull back and I look at the big picture. And I always tell myself this one thing. Will this matter to me in a month? Or will this affect me in a year from now? And the answer is always no. So anyway, good question. Appreciate it. So tell your story, Paul. Okay, I'll get into it. I want to see some of the comments, and I'll go to uh, some of the aggravation I've been going through. How you doing, Tim? Thanks for joining in, buddy. You haven't been to bed yet. Wow. What's going on, Ron? Hey, good morning. Yeah, I like going on at different times because um, I catch different people. And so um, actually 9 o'clock in the morning here, if I go on right, I'll get four or 500 viewers. Right now, I'll probably get 200 maybe. But I don't do it to see how many viewers I do it. I do it because I like doing it. Say, did you sign up for Medicare for the PI when you turned 65? Did you have to go back? Uh-huh. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Well, um, let me raise my head up over the comment. Did I sign up for Yeah, I did. I signed up for Part B when I signed up for the whole thing back in the States. I think they take $144 out of my check, unless that's gone up. I don't know. Um, and I do not have supplemental insurance. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I have great friends out here. And um, yesterday, I vented to uh, two of them and got great feedback from both of them. I'll tell you guys a little bit. Um, 
<laughs> what's going on? But uh, I met with Bud Brown. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He vlogs out here. He's a dear friend of mine. And um, and I was I said, listen, man. I said this isn't going to be our typical conversation where we're telling jokes and stuff. I said I'm going to unload on you. He goes, okay, rock on. <laughs> and so he came up with a great line because some people that both me and I, here's part of it. I have like five different issues going on this month and uh, that are all that are negative, if you will. And uh, telling Bud that there are some people here locally, uh, not online, that are having troll-like behavior with us. And um, these are people that we have done as far as we can tell, because we've, re we've replayed the movie in our heads, me and I am talking about, of where we did them some solids, did them some favors, did them, uh, and it's not like we, you know, did anything great, but little things to kind of help them, if you will. Doesn't mean we gave them any money, but I won't get into specifics, but we were, we were being nice to them. And, um, doing what we consider to be nice things and they came back and almost punished us for that and bud um was talking about being a nice guy he's a real nice guy and he says you know what sometimes i suffer from being too nice and he said so he talked to a friend about it and he came up with a great line I'm never, ever going to forget. And if you're an enabler type of person or a real kind person or an empathetic person, which I think I am, and I know that is, um, sometimes it's hard for us to say no to people. And so what Bud said was, don't set yourself on fire to keep the guy next to you warm. And that just summed it all up, is that's what we've been doing. We've been setting our on fire to keep somebody else warm, and it's backfired on us. So um, my answer to all of that to May has been that these toxic type of people that have been trying to inject themselves into our world is we have to treat them like trolls and haters that we have online. These are some people that are in real life. And of course, I'm not going to name any names. But um, I've said, May, ignore them. That's what you do with a troll. You don't ever engage with them. You don't ever get into the, they're, they're trying to pick a fight. They're looking for conflict. There's something lacking in their little world that they've got to get busy in ours. So that's generally spurred by jealousy or envy or whatever. And um, some people see a happy couple like May and I, and they're unhappy because of for whatever reason, and they're trying to split us up. And so um, they don't know what they're going up against. <laughs> okay, give me a few minutes. There's 200 people on, and I'll, I'll get into the meat. Now, that's one of them. That's one of the things is we've been having uh, slings and arrows tossed at us by people that we have actually tried to do some solids for, and it's backfired. It's just gone the wrong way, which pretty much speaks to the character of those people. Consider the source, my father always told me. So um, that's that's that. Oh, look at my thing. I'm not wearing any pants. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you're at the win, I'm assuming. It looks like Biff's Pleasure Palace. Yeah, I've heard that some young people have been like taken or gangs or something have been like invading the casinos. Not invading, but renting rooms and I guess stuff's getting stolen. Um, well, that's a good question. And I can almost put you guys off of Doom and Getty right now because. Um, my neighbor, Mark, who's the other guy that I talked to and fitted to last night about my issues and who also gave me some great feedback. 
So Bud and Mark, you know, thumbs up. Um, we were talking about this, that, that we don't like to give advice, of course. I don't, at least. But there's some rock star deals in Cebu right now on high rises. If you're a high rise kind of guy and you like all the modern amenities and all that, it's like half price. Um, a couple of vloggers that I know are there right now and they're renting condos, I think, for 400 a month. And my friend Gary um, was living there like a year or so before all the COVID stuff. So I guess it's been over a year. But he says, man, I was paying like 800 for that same unit if you were in the same building. So um, that might be the way to go if you're on a budget and you want to get the most bang for your buck and you're planning on coming over here. Um, since there's such a glut of condos in Thailand and in um, the Philippines here, and I know in Cebu, because I've got firsthand information on that, that um, that might be something for you to look at. Dumaguete is expensive. Um, rents here are not really going down. Uh, people will negotiate. My friend, Mark, who lives next door, he's moving, what is it, day after tomorrow. He found a place on the beach. He wanted to change the scenery, change the view. And he wanted more bedrooms because uh, these are all one bedrooms. And so he just kind of walked into this place and it's a good deal. And um, he's getting three bedrooms and he's right on the beach. And so he got my mind spinning that maybe I should look around. So that's what May and I did yesterday. We looked around at some places. It was windy there. How much does medicine cost? Well, it depends on the medicine. But it's more expensive than the states. In other words, a bottle of aspirin or, you know, that's that's a compare. Oh, let's just use it. It's a bottle of vitamins is a bargain. And out here, it would, it's triple, quadruple the price for vitamins quadruple the price for ibuprofen as far as what is it called static medications or something like that um you know like blood pressure and all that i don't know i don't take it anymore it wasn't it wasn't very much for the blood pressure medication in fact i've got a hundred of them in my closet but i don't ever take them anymore and um but i had to get um some specific meds one time when i got a rash and the doctor misdiagnosed it. It was a completely wrong diagnosis, diagnosis. And it cost me $500 to get this medication she prescribed that was worthless. When another doctor told me, oh, you just need to change soap. <laughs> the soap cost me like a buck. That cured the problem. <laughs> There's a lot of homeless in the PI. Um, again, it's tar it's hard for me to, to put my finger on that because of where I live. Uh, where I live, which is Dumaguete slash Valencia slash Bacong slash uh, Dowen, um, I don't see a lot of homeless people. There's homeless people everywhere. I see people on the streets that are locals. Um, I think, again, going back to Cebu, every time I've gone to Cebu, uh, I've walked out of the bus station onto the street and there are people, families living on the sidewalk there. So it's much more exaggerated there. And I also heard that there's a tremendous amount of poverty in Lapu Lapu, uh, which again is out in Cebu. But you get into Cebu, Newtown, I think it is, these guys are at. And um, it's all modern, high rise, half price right now. And so... That might be something for you guys to consider. I don't know. What's falling apart besides our bodies? Yeah, our bodies. You know, it used to be that uh, for me to get hurt, I was, it was because there was an incident. <laughs> you know, I was trying to catch the football, and uh, I ran into a tree and, and hurt arm. Now I can watch football and get hurt. <laughs> I just 
kind of shift my my body and all of a sudden something goes like that hey, it's good to see you jolly bee freeze i love that name oh yes you can get amazon delivery that's half my ash my uh aggravation this week has been with stuff i bought from amazon good morning gary how's it going florida what's happened san diego i'm far from cool but uh I appreciate you. I often listen to your channel when working as a software. Always interested to keep going. I'm married to a Philip Best movie I ever made. Yeah, good for you. What my last video was a real weirdo. He got a lot of flack. <laughs> I've done two videos that um, after I did them, I said, oh, no. <laughs> this did not go as planned. And uh, so the last video I did is with this guy that's a DEA agent. And I guess he was on Geo's channel. I didn't know until about five minutes before we started this thing. Anyway, um, that whole thing went sideways. And uh, I left all the comments up because everybody was saying this guy's full of shit and whatnot. And um, I didn't filter anything. I stopped filtering the comments um, on my videos and when I'm with another man I don't filter the comments at all I just let it go uh, the only time that I hold back on comments is uh, when I interview or, or sitting with a female because um, some of the comments can get nasty so I hold them what's called for review but I, I find a great freedom and I haven't answered one comment I just let the dialogue go on that last video that I did I actually lost two subscribers from the guy. <laughs> and then there was a guy that uh, about four months ago I had on. The same thing happened. Uh, I had always wanted to interview an African-American or a black guy living over here in the Philippines. I always wanted to get their perspective. I thought that would be fascinating. You know, what's it like? Is it uh, compared to America? And do you feel, you know, a prejudice or bigotry or... Is it better? Is it worse? This, that, the, I had all those kind of questions. And um, and the guy that I met, guy named Gerard, he's a nice guy. There's nothing wrong with the guy. Um, but he came over to the house, and he was actually a very entertaining, upbeat, um, high-energy cat. But I said, okay, we're going to start the video. You know, I go to push the button on the uh, on the camera like this and he goes wait 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 and he pulls up a mask and puts it on and it says black lives matter <laughs> 30 i mean one second before i said oh boy here we go and boy i think i lost about 20 subscribers on that video but i don't believe in the censorship so if I make a video with somebody, I tell them, the, I make the same speech to everybody that's ever been on the channel. I say this. I say, this is your video, not mine. And you can say whatever you want to say and just be honest. And um, I'll try my best to, you know, keep things moving and ask you for questions. And if I don't understand something, I'll ask you to repeat it. And... Um, if you, if you like the video, cool, I'll post it. If you don't like it, we'll delete it. And we can either forget about it or we can redo it. And it sets people at ease that they know, oh, okay, I got, you know, I can kind of do this again if, if, if it doesn't go off well. And so far, nobody said, no, I don't like the video. But a couple of times I've thought to myself, boy, I don't like this video. But I've gone ahead and posted it and decided to go ahead and take my lumps. <laughs> Yeah, but Baby May sells it naturally. She doesn't flaunt it, and it's more genuine for sure. I would agree with that. Um, there's a lot of copycats on her stuff that I see, which is okay. You know, it's the sincerest form of flattery. But when May does it, she just does it because, um, she, like I said, she's comfortable in her own skin. She's my little hippie chick. She marches to a different drum. Um, she's 35 years old. She's not, you know, 22. And um, you're right. I appreciate that. Never seen, no, 
I don't think there's a lot. Well, you know what the indigent people here do is they live in um, what the hell is it called? Oh man, I'm having a Joe Biden moment. For some reason, I can't think of the name of it, but it's it's like uh, slum is the only word I can come up with. But there's another word; it'll it'll come to my brain eventually. Um, I didn't get the vaccine. I have heard that the vaccine is going to be available this week. In fact, right around the corner from right down the mountain, if you will, from where I live, there's like a free clinic, if you will, across from a police station. It's on a corner and they're making the vaccines available and it's going to be free of all things, even for me. And, um, I don't know which vaccine it is. So, uh, I made a joke the other day. I said, well, I'll let baby May get the vaccine and see what happens after four days. <laughs> Make sure she doesn't like, you know, start growing hair from <laughs> the bottom of her feet. <laughs> hey, man, I hope to meet you too. <laughs> I'm good. I'm just recovering from bad from a bad month. I'll be glad when this month is over. If it could go wrong, it did. <laughs> Hi, Larry. I'll call you honey anytime I don't want to. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're referring to um, the feminist deal, right? Yeah. That was like my first video where I called a girl honey. And she chewed me out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 you refer you you watched my very first video. That was Jill. That was Jill. Um, I was thinking about reposting that video on the four year anniversary of living out here, um, bringing it back up, maybe changing the title a little bit or something. But I'd like to reissue that video because it was a Facebook video. It wasn't a YouTube. I didn't have a YouTube channel when I made that first video. It was for Facebook, and uh, the cameras turned the wrong way. It's not wide. It's like up and down. And so, but I really, it's, you know, that's kind of an endearing video to me. It's called Why I Moved to the Philippines. So um, maybe I'll repost that somehow, figure out how to do that. If you get over 100,000 views, I know some others. Actually, well, thank you for that. But you know what? My subs have um, um, dropped in half. My views are way down. Um, my subscribers are 50% of what they were last month. And something weird happened last month. Again, and this isn't one of my problems because the channel's the channel. You know, if it gets big, great. If it gets small, that's fine, too. People subscribe, great. If they don't, fine. If they unsubscribe, great, you know. Um, but my neighbor Mark got hacked, and his channel got taken down, and and this, and it, it's, it's back up and running. We did a video about it. I'm sure you guys are familiar with me and Mark. You know that his channel's back, and it's just as good as ever. He's rocking and rolling, making great videos. But um, Mark also posted 50 videos of mine. And we, I couldn't figure out how to get rid of the guy. Um, Mark got his channel back. And, he, and then he, the guy also, well, he's not just me and Mark. But he took other people's videos. And ever since that happened, it's had an effect on my channel. So I don't know if that's a um, um, cause effect thing or if it's just a coincidence or if I'm just putting out shitty content and nobody's watching me anymore. He is moving. He's moving Thursday. He's moving to the beach. Um, I don't know what safe means. Is it safe here? Is the vaccine safe? Um, no, not follow him. We, it did, he's getting, what he's doing is there's nothing wrong with the apartments we're living in. In fact, I really like it, but an extra bedroom is 
would be really convenient for a number of reasons. So uh, just a little more room. If see Mark does YouTube for a living, I kind of do it as a hobby. So it would be nice for Mark and it would be nice for me and baby May. baby May does it for a living. So it would be nice. I've always thought to have an extra room that you just take the bed and stuff out of it and um, turn it into a little YouTube studio, if you will. And that way you can have all your equipment in one place because we keep acquiring more crap. And um, it would be a little more organized. Uh, you could set up, like you're looking at the bathroom behind me right now because May's asleep. Um, but you can have a little better background. You could do a green screen if you want to. And um, so having a dedicated studio, would I think it would just make life simpler and easier. And then also, if people come over, like her sister comes in once a week, and it would be nice to just let her crash here. And, uh, you know, I could sleep on a futon or something or a mattress on the floor in the second bedroom and let them take the bedroom for the night. You know, bring her kids over or something. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> May and I, <clears throat> excuse me, sh should do a video about this apartment hunting. Um, he did put the idea in my head and yesterday May and I went out and looked at two or three places, four places, and they all sucked and they were all expensive. And, um, for some reason, they're not getting it here in Valencia and Dumaguete that a bunch of foreigners have left and they're not probably going to be able to get here for at least six months or a year or whatever the number is. And they need to lower their prices. Now they figured that out in Cebu. They've, uh, on all those condos. <clears throat> they're like 30% occupancy and they're foreign owned, if you will. And, um, for the most part, and, uh, I think cash flow. So they're, you know, they're doing the right thing. They're writing them out better to take half than nothing. Right. They don't have that mentality out here. At least I haven't seen it. And, um, so am I planning to follow? No, but would I, would I, would I make a move? Sure. If it made sense. I lived in Summerlin. I lived on uh, 8508 Copper Knoll. You can look at it on Google Maps. Spill the beans. <laughs> okay, uh, I will spill the beans. Um, I'll just, uh, there's like four different things that went wrong. And so I already shared that we've taken some slings and arrows for people that we tried to help. And they kind of backfired on us. So I told May, ignore them, ignore it like a troll online. And so far, so good. You know, it's working. It's tamped down a lot. And um, for the life of us, I'm not saying we're saints, but I can't figure out if we did anything wrong by these people. I can't figure it out. So I'm going to share this with you about my phone. <laughs> the big phone debacle. This is a wireless microphone and it's by Sabine tech. And so I bought these, I saw another vlogger using them and I thought, how cool is that? You know, you just put this on, there's no wire hanging from it and you got your little gizmo or whatever, or just sitting on the couch and, um, you just talk and I read the reviews on it. The reviews were glowing. <clears throat> Well, I need to use two because if I interview somebody or if May and I are walking around together and she's over there and I'm over there, apparently the range on these things is good enough that you can do just that. You can have your camera going and it hooks up via Bluetooth and then you have to use an app that they have. And here's the deal. <clears throat> I bought the new phone. For a thousand dollars, Samsung S21 Ultra. After much research and questions here about what phone I should buy, because it's got a hardcore processor. My little Vivo phone, which is eighty dollars, um, it didn't have enough memory. It didn't have enough processing power to handle this on Bluetooth, and. One microphone is loud 
And when I hook up two, which they've assured me I can do, the other one isn't. To prove that point, Mark and I did a video last night where I hooked up both the microphones, followed all the instructions. I had a mic on, Mark had a mic on, and we were videotaping the same video. He was videoing it, and I was videoing it. And we were going to do one where we both launch the same video, but on each other's channel. So we thought that would be something different. And um, I had on his wired mic. He had on my mic. I had on mine. So I, we each had two mics on. <clears throat> All right. You got the idea. You could hear Mark just fine, but you could barely hear me. It still didn't work, even with the new phone. And I've been going back and forth with Sabine Tech via email about this issue. And I said, I don't like using the Bluetooth. I want to use the regular camera. And so they said, oh, that's no problem. All you have to do is there's a hole here. They said, you take the uh, adapter that we sent you with the microphone and you plug it in and you make one microphone a receiver. And then you plug that into your phone. And then you take the other microphone slash microphones. And now you bypass the Bluetooth and you can go on your regular camera and problem solved. One's a receiver. The other two are transmitters. You're not going through Bluetooth. You're not going through the app. You're just going, as, it's as if you just plugged in a wired mic. So it should work just perfectly. And I said, that makes sense. Because for some reason, the Bluetooth and the two mics together and the app, it's, it's not working. So I said, great. So they actually had sent me two new um, microphones because I complained that one wasn't working, which in fact, it's still the same problem. So that's got me flustered. Then they, so anyway, so I go back and forth with this lady on tech and she's been really nice. And she says, yeah. And, and I said, well, how do you do that? So she sent me a video of a guy showing you how to do it. You take this pin and you plug it in to this and it comes with the, he makes a big point that it comes with this. And so I opened the box up with all the stuff in it. And all I got was this. It's a charger. There is no pin. I didn't get it. And I wrote her and she said, well, you can buy one for 20 bucks. <laughs> and then you plug it into your phone. I said, okay. Apparently I didn't buy the right package or whatever when I, when I purchased these. So before I did all that, I said, let's just, let's just try my wired microphones. Cause I haven't played with this phone very much. Um, let's try my wired microphones on my new phone. So I'll plug them in and on my thousand dollar phone, there's nowhere to plug it in. There's just a charger and a speaker on my $80 phone. See that hole and that other gizmo? I can plug in, oh, I'm on the wrong side. I can plug in my microphone right there on my $80 Vivo. But on my $1,000 Samsung, I can't plug in shit because they don't have one. So I have to buy an adapter for this that will hang down and I have to buy an adapter for this that will plug into the adapter. So I got two adapters plugged in and my frustration level just went because they also didn't send me with my thousand dollar phone, a wall charger. They sent me a cord, but I had to go to Samsung and spend 40 scones for something to plug into the wall that wasn't included either. So Samsung pissed me off. Um, what happened here? Samsung pissed me off big time by not giving me 
um, a wall charger. I thought that was included with every phone I've ever bought. And then I actually just lost my shit when I saw that there's nowhere to plug in because forget my speakers. What if you want to listen to your headphones? What if you want to listen to your music on here? I don't do that, but what if you do? And um, so I, I buy all this stuff and it's done nothing but cause me grief. It, I thought it was going to make my life simple and it's actually gone and complicated. It's been expensive. Uh, it hasn't worked as planned. I guess I made some assumptions and I made a comment earlier that I'm a big picture guy. And so finally after getting all jicky and pissed off and, and, and back and forth, I said, what am I doing? Remember how I told you I'm a minimalist and how I never felt better than when I got rid of all my stuff. And what am I doing? I'm getting some stuff, aren't I? And what's happening to my attitude? It's going down the tank. So I big pictured it. And I said, you know what? Stop. Stop. You're spending money. I, I like to think that I'm investing it because it's in better equipment. And eventually I'd like to pass it down to May or just give it to her to begin with uh, because she takes the channel thing a lot more seriously than I do, but it's just stuff. And so, but that had me in falling down mode. If you remember Michael Douglas, when he went in and he wanted to have breakfast <laughs> in the movie falling down, they stopped serving breakfast at 11 o'clock. And he came in at 11.02 and they said, I'm sorry, sir, you can't have breakfast. And he just lost it. And that's exactly how I felt. I was like, no, I want my breakfast. <laughs> you know, I want you to have included all this stuff. that Because it was even in a how-to video that some other guy did that she sent me. And this is included. You just plug this in and you turn it into a receiver or, or transmitter or whatever the frig I was talking about earlier. And uh, then it will work. So, uh, Mark, yesterday, he said, dude, why don't you just try your phone without any microphones? I said, okay. So, and that never occurred to me. And so, I turned it on, and we did a test video, and it worked just fine. <laughs> so, actually, I could sit on the couch and do my little potato head videos uh, where I have a, one of those weird thoughts or a joke or a story, and I don't need any friggin' microphone. It's just as long as I don't have any ambient noise, which I don't have in this apartment, I'm cool for school. And I guess if I want to, I can send off for all these adapter crap things and um, and do, you know, the regular camera. And let me continue to bitch because you asked. When you do it through the app, through the Sabine app, Bluetooth, the camera quality is shit. But when I do it on the regular phone phone, camera quality is off the hook. So, um, I, I again, I thought, wow, you know, it will simplify my life not to deal with all these wires. But I can't believe, I still have a hard time wrapping my head around that Samsung made this phone, this whiz-bang phone that got glowing reviews. Nobody when I watch the reviews of it, you know, you go to these techie guys and they'll unbox something and explain it to you and tell you how cool and groovy it is or what they like and don't like. Now, one of them mentioned the fact that there's no port in there for you to plug anything into. Okay, I'm done. And then there's other things that went wrong, but I'm going to save that for another time. You've heard enough. <laughs> it's all about stuff. The, uh, you know, there's some people, again, that have been inflicted into my life recently that um, that is actually easier for me to deal with because I can just shut them down and ignore them and move on with my day. My life was great before I met them, and I don't need them in my world. So, um, and we do get a little tripped out as to why they act that way. And they ask me, she goes, why do they do that? And I said, they're unhappy, baby. They're unhappy with themselves. And 
they don't want us to be happy, <laughs> which is, and she can't wrap her head around that. And I have a hard time with it too. Yeah. Rick Flair's here in the house. Okay, well, you've got it, buddy. Hey, George, I'm late on comments, so hopefully you heard the, the rant. You'll know how it's going. Yeah, no good deed goes unpunished if you're freaking right. That's right. Do not set yourself on fire to keep the guy next to you warm. Remember that one. I don't know anything about that place. I, I couldn't give you an opinion because I don't know anything about it. Yeah, and when we went out and looked at apartments today just for drill to see what was out there, it was just ridiculous. They wanted top-of-the-line money. One place was built by a Canadian, so guess what he did? He wired the whole place at 110 instead of 220 because they used 110 in Canada. And the folks said, well, you can go ahead and move in because we're, we're converting it over to 220. I thought, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, let us just go ahead and move in here. Uh, without any real like, without being able to plug in anything except for two outlets you've got fixed. And they were building another building next to it. And, you know, then another place we went to was nice, but um, um, they're building another building on the property and it's nonstop power tools all day. And they talk about chickens. I like the sound of chickens. I didn't like the sound of these chickens. These chickens were on steroids, so I said, I was like, May, can you do a video sitting out on your patio like we can now? She goes, No, so we, we, what's the point? And the layout of the place was okay, but it didn't have a view, um, like I've got now, and it was more money. So, oh, for two on those apartments, this place is still a better deal, um, by far, and just to get an extra room. It's not critical, something I'd like to have, but I don't really need it. Again, it would be stuff, if you will. So why go through the brain damage? But if we were to liken upon a place that was the same price or less, and it was to have an extra room, and if it was to have, if it was to be a better deal than this, in other words, if it had easy access, if it had a nice view, if it was if it was designed to where May's happy with the kitchen and I'm happy with, you know, the setup, um, we're not, we're not, we're on a month to month here and, uh, our feet are not set in cement. So we can, we can move and groove when we want to. And a change of view is always good. You know, a change of, uh, a change of latitude changes your attitude. Right. So sometimes just moving away, is would be is healthy be a nice nice change of pace and if we don't like that we can move again how you doing out there scotty guy okay. scotty scotty so nice you had to name yourself twice great minds think alike <laughs> a bird in the hand yeah well this whole covid thing is um I won't even go there. Yeah, it's an awesome saying. It's an awesome saying. Yeah, I really needed to hear it, you know. And that's one thing about having great friends is um, they'll tell you the truth, and but they do it with I don't know kindness or they just do it. They don't they don't give you an ass chewing like you shouldn't have done that. You know, didn't you know better? I don't hear that from him. He just says, you know what, Paul, don't light yourself on fire to keep the guy next to you warm. And um, it just spoke to me. So I like to share it. When those things come around, I like to share it. What do I think about long distance relationships? Um, I think they're they're cool. Uh, I'm not a big uh, fan of sending money. I don't think that that's necessary. Um, Money for load on a phone, maybe, but to start shipping over TVs and refrigerators and all that kind of stuff on someone you haven't met. No. But long distance relationships um, can work a number of ways. 
I have a long distance relationship with May every time I go on vacation. Before this COVID thing, I used to leave the country once a year. So I went to um, Indonesia and I went to Vietnam. And me and May would chat every night, um, you know, before we go to sleep. And we had a long distance relationship. Of course, it was only two weeks at a time, but I knew her and I had a relationship with her in person. So if you just meet someone online, Mr. Ron is on here. He met someone online and it worked out just great. My new neighbor, Jerry, he met his wife online and it worked out just great. So it just depends on the person, I suppose. But for me, um, my humble opinion is that I think it's great to go ahead and, and get to know somebody because you can really, if you're talking to them for three and four hours a day and they're telling you about their life and they're always answering your calls and they're not asking you for stuff, you can kind of get an idea. You can know them really well before you even get here. So that's an awesome setup. That's what happened to Jerry, my neighbor. That's what he did with the woman he eventually married is they would talk for hours and he knew more about her than he did the woman he had been married to for 30 years because they were just exchanging information left and right. So that's awesome. But it's the money thing that I have a problem with. People sending a bunch of money. Um, so ask yourself this question. How did she eat? or he eat, whoever you're talking to, um, and get by before they met you. Thank you very much, David. We appreciate that. You guys are great. Just wish May had a sister. You're a great source of information. Well, May does have a sister. Riza. Good morning. Don't let the trolls in live chat. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, th thank you, Stephen. The trolls don't, the online trolls especially are just like, they don't even factor in anymore. They used to bother us when we first started the channel because we didn't understand it. Uh, but that's not even an issue anymore. It was the trolls that of people, few people that we knew that um, kind of shot, not surprised me, but because May already had them figured out. But again, that's kind of in our rearview mirror already. What are we doing up? We're talking to each other, buddy. Yeah, there's still travel restrictions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially in Cebu. I mean, if, if Cebu was my destination... And I like, here's another problem for me is I don't like high rises. I don't like the feeling. Um, I don't like hotels, you know, the hallways and everything. They always just kind of make me feel constrained. I like something that's ground level, like a house or an apartment that's on the ground. Um, I like being able to walk outside and be outside instead of taking an escalator or an elevator or stairs and got to go down so many flights and um, it's just not my cup of tea. It's just not comfortable for me. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of guys like living the high rise lifestyle and these places have got swimming pools. They've got gyms. They've got, usually they got coffee shops like right across the street, good restaurants right across the street. It's very cosmopolitan. So if that's your thing and you want to, you're on a budget and you want to live that kind of life, um, I would, I would jump on it and I would sign it sign a long-term lease on something like that because eventually things are going to open up and eventually the supply is going to dwindle. The demand is going to go up along with the price. So it only makes sense to try to lock in a cheap price for as long as possible. I live in Naga City and everything is going up. Yep. And I uh, ran to SMO, SM Mall yesterday. Didn't pick up much. Yeah, prices are going up here too. Uh, food's more expensive. All the sin stuff like liquor and cigarettes has gone up a tremendous amount. 
Um, the peso is at about 47 right now for an American dollar. Um, a week ago or so, well, a couple of weeks ago, it was 48. So it's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> I have to take out an extra hundred bucks a month now to make up that, that difference. <sighs> Just one big complaint with that. Uh, no. I finally found you online. Why is that you have a good sense of humor? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I try to keep smiling. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> that was yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, failure, one thing, you know, what Mark reminded me of. Now, Bud Brown gave me the whole fire thing, but Mark gave me a great nugget. He gave me my own advice um, or not advice, my own um, philosophy, if you will, is that sometimes when everything is going wrong and you're at your deepest, darkest moment, it's the best thing that ever happened to you, but you don't find out until later. So sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta walk through some, on some, on some coals, some hot coals and because it prompts you to change. And so, or it reminds you of, of, um, that you're going down a wrong road or a wrong path. So I realized that with all these microphones and phones and, and all this stuff, that I, I've been preaching stuff makes me unhappy. It just reinforced that. And now I can put the brakes on. It's like, okay, stop. Let's cut our losses here. Let's not complain about the money spent or anything like that. Let's just keep moving forward. And um, the world's not going to end. Um, I was doing great when I got off the plane four years ago. And I'm doing 10 times better than that today. And so why let something like this rock my world stuff? It's easy. Yeah, it is easy to get a rash out here. There's a lot of weird plants. Um, I have a lot of, I'm really highly allergic. So, um, and there's a lot of bug bites and you can, you can sweat a lot. I, I fortunately I don't have that issue. Um, I'm not one that has like heavy perspiration and all that kind of jazz. But um, yeah, there's a lot of guys that are just wounded, you know, with rashes. Uh, they brushed against some sort of weird bush. I've done it. Um, bug bites that come out of nowhere, and so you're, you're going to have skin issues out here. Talk about Filipinas. What do you want me to say? <laughs> now I'm sleeping on the sidewalk, and I know why, because I got high. A Brit in Saigon. That's another good point, Ron. Yeah super family orientated so you will see you're right it's um 10 people living in a place because if if one of them falls in the trouble they go live with a cousin or a niece or a grandparent super fit yeah, that's a very good point <laughs> yeah, you got that right <laughs> uh, Oh, a Brit in Saigon is a troll. Here we go. Look. Is May good to 69 with? Wow. I wonder how old you are. What else have you got there, Brit? Is that the best one you got? Huh? Did that get you excited to say that? What a douche. That's the best you can do? Really? That's it? That's all you got. 
What do you guys think of a Brit in Saigon? What do you think about that mentality? <laughs> yeah, I try not to filter the comments. Let me go back up to this douchebag. Um, you know, I let it go through because it's just me here talking. Now he's he's disrespecting May, which I don't like. But I leave it up here because I want you guys to get an idea as to the mentality. You know, this is the guy that you need to have the empathy for. Okay, this guy has no fucking life. Yeah, pardon my French. And um, the probably a fourteen-year-old's mentality. And you're a Brit in Saigon. I doubt that. I think you're a Brit in your mother's basement. How you doing, John? <laughs> well, Gerald, why don't you come out? I'll buy the first cup of coffee. Good morning, my neighbor. I was just talking about you. I'm in a long distance relationship. And uh, how you uh, how it worked out for you? How good it worked out for you? I have no idea what that means. Hey, Paul, greetings from Copenhagen. Copenhagen, how cool is that? Good to see you again on YouTube. Hope as well on your end. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Always nice to have the ladies join us. Metal Creek, I recently watched Reese's video on our mom's tobacco stand. Have you tried the cigarette stand? What do they like? It was a great video. I have not from there, but I have tried one of the native cigarettes. It wasn't my cup of tea. Um, but appreciate you watching our channel. Yeah, I've got all those lapel mics that you plug in. I was trying to go wireless was the deal. Um, and the wire and the wired ones cost me 20 bucks. Why is my voice so husky? Yeah, I don't know. It's probably the cigarettes. Thank you very much. Last time I was in the Philippines was 1974 when I was in the Navy at Subic Bay on board the USS John McCain. Lots of nice memories. Yeah. Squat. Not sure what that means. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly right. That's what I was trying to think of. Thank you. Not a slum. It's called squatters. I know a couple of people that live in squatters villages and they're just free. They're free. Um, they're free. <laughs> it's government land. They just put up these shanties and they're made out of like uh, anything they can find wood metal. And they just kind of hammer something up like shelter. And some of them, oh, they lived there for years. And they keep improving them, you know, and so they turn into like nice, kind of, kind of nice little spots for what it is. When checking out new digs, try to stay on high ground. Typhoons getting worse due to climate change. Might get some pushback on that. Talk about pushback. You should see my last video. <laughs> yeah, I am. I do have my Joe Biden moments. Dana Carvey does a great Joe Biden, by the way. <laughs> let's see I'm getting behind where are we here where did I go I got lost okay hey king No clue. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I've yet to figure it out. Um, I heard the prices of homes are going to the ceiling in the States due to a lumber shortage and various other factors. 
But um, homes out here, I don't know how they price them, but it's pretty much location, 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 if you want to know the truth. Uh, where it's located will have a lot to do with it. Man gets her good looks. Looks like her mom. Yeah, they're good. They're a cute family, huh? Thank you for that, Jimmy. She would like that way too much, Clayton. What are you guys talking about? My Paul, is the rent in your apartment? Is it? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. It's month to month. Um, there's no contracts here. And um, I think that the landlord wants the ability to throw you out if he doesn't like you. So he doesn't want long-term leases or rents. And I, it's, a good, it's a good option for both. So I'm not comfortable. I've never signed a lease since I've been here because I've only lived in two places. But neither place required a lease. And uh, neither place required more than one month security deposit. So, yeah, there's going to be a vacancy here come Thursday. Come jump on it. Yeah, it is month to month. some people up this morning, aren't we? That's always fun. Yeah, I just don't feel comfortable with the lease thing. And um, that, you know, why? Because I gave my word. That was another conversation I had with Bud Brown about signing leases and how, and how we could, like I could, let's just for hypothetical, which is never good, but Let's do a hypothetical. Let's say I, I signed a two-year lease on this place and um, there was no COVID and I got sick of the place and I just moved to Vietnam. Never gave notice, nothing. Just blew him off, you know. Um, I like to fulfill my obligations. So, but a lease, getting back to that, can be in your benefit. Like I was talking about Cebu, if you find a place that's super cheap and uh, you can lock that in and get that guaranteed, I would definitely take advantage of that. So there's pros and cons, right? Um, I don't like the lease idea because I feel locked in and I like to be able to bounce if I want to bounce. Um, but financially, it could make a lot of sense. Like I said, on these Cebu high rises um, if it was my cup of tea and I was to move out there which it's not and I won't but if it was I would try to sign something for at least a year with the option to renew at the same price probably wouldn't get it but you know try good morning Norway Tech fun is right. Good. Yeah, I know. Found that out. And then there's another adapter I got to get. So that's two adapters. But why would you? I mean, why wouldn't a phone just come with a plug? It's my point. Am I being whiny? Why would you have to buy an adapter to do something you can do on an $80 phone? Yeah, I've given up on the Bluetooth. You know, I know. My point is, why should you buy an adapter? Why isn't there just a plug there for you? Why, why, why? Oh, okay.
tired of Clayton. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that. I didn't know about Apple, but um, you know what? It's just a way to make more money, right? Sell now, sell upsells. up sales. That's what it is. Yeah, it's just the principle of the thing. <laughs> I know I got to buy something else. And if I buy it, guess what? I'll bet you 10 to 1 if I go to the Samsung store here in town, they won't have it. I'll, I'll just, it'll be out of stock. And I can go, and then I can go to three other places and maybe they'll have it, maybe they won't. But for me, it's just the fact that what. <laughs> I w it would have been nice. I know we don't live in a perfect world. If they had said, by the way, you can also purchase this, this, and this. Um, and I wasn't offered that. And I probably would have bought it. Or just changed phones. I don't know. It was a great movie. It was a great movie. Falling Down. Yeah, you know, I, I'm looking back at it and I'm thinking, you know what, I should have just gone with the friggin' Oppo. Or I should have just gone into, I should have just got what Mark bought for 600 bucks because it works fine. Um, but again, you know, it's all over and done with. It's just stuff in the big picture, of the big scheme of things. It didn't change my life. It just added frustration. Um I was trying to simplify something and I complicated it. So let's just move on, right? How you doing, Frugal? <laughs> yeah. I guess it helps if you've seen the movie. It's an old movie. No, they don't. Uh -uh. Yeah, no, it's a certain chord and like, uh, my Vivo, I can't plug it into that one. My, um, I do have an old Apple that doesn't work. It doesn't work on May's phone. It's a different kind of wire and it's a different plug altogether. It's a different configuration. It's unique to Samsung. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, I've never teed off on anybody because I know it's not the person behind the counter's fault. I worked in retail forever. So I, uh, I have always just gone with the flow. But when I saw that scene, um, I just totally related to it because he did what I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, Fred, I already explained it. <laughs> so I have to rewind this when I post it. Uh, thank you very much, Don. You're right. Um, the thing that, that, that bothered us was that it was... Um, having unintended consequences. In other words, May was feeling guilty about a few things. And so we've decided that we need to, um, we need to be a little more cautionary about who we do what with. And now we, it's, it's instead of these quick encounters and then um, we need to vet people a little better. No, it's 527 right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did have a chicken sounded off on somebody. Was it May's hands? Yeah. 
we'll get around to that. So thank you for the information. But uh, I've decided to put that on the back burner. <laughs> I'm tired of jacking with it. And uh, you know what? It's just, it just, it's, it's just. I, at some point in time, I just have to say, you know what? Stop. Now we're buying this. We're buying that. We're buying this. And it's just. I don't mean to sound like a cheapskate, but it's, after a while, it's like all my Joe Biden money went away on this stupid phone. I was supposed to have some money left over, and it didn't happen. So. By between the adapter and then this thing and that thing, um, I don't want to play anymore. So I'm just going to use the phone without any microphone at all because it works good. And I think next month I'm going to try to get away from doing interviews anyway because I'm kind of getting bored with it. And um, I think that I kind of go back to my roots, if you will, uh, where I just kind of sit down and talk about something that's on my mind, kind of like we're doing right now. Uh, but I'll have a topic, and I'll try to have a beginning, a middle, and an end to it. And I was happier doing that. And for some reason, I seem to get sidetracked. And I like helping May. So, you know, subscribe to Baby May. Today with Baby May. Cold and wet. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot here. Greetings for Silicon. Really enjoy the videos. I'm trying to decide time I have for the retirement destination. Okay. Um, I have a friend, Woody, that is living over here from Thailand. He's been there for 10 years. And he uh, he was finding it to get, like, not so expat friendly. I think there is a way. God, I hate to quote. AJ Nomad has a, has a, my friend AJ just started a little YouTube channel. He's over in Thailand. He would probably be the guy to ask because he's living there. And there's some other guys that are living in Thailand that can answer it better. Um, I like Thailand. I actually prefer Thailand to the Philippines. But the language is um, one of the factors. And um, the visa. It's a three-year deal here. And um, the visa in Thailand is more complicated and they require that you have insurance. So it's more, it's, um, and I, I think they want you to have a bank account now or something. Again, uh, I haven't, I'm not moving there, so I haven't reviewed it or looked into it. But my friend AJ has a channel. It's called AJ Nomad. You can check him out and he'll be happy to answer your questions if you message him. And then there's a bunch of other guys that have channels on Thailand. I don't watch them, but I know they're out there. So you might want to look into that. Um, but I liked the Philippines for the visa. I like the fact the reason I moved to Dumaguete is because it actually is pretty much impervious to the typhoons and all that. We get the tail end of it. So it's safe. Um, it's small. It's, but it's got three different ways to escape. It's got an airport, it's got a ferry, it's got a bus system. So transportation's, you know, easy. There's a lot of positives to Dumaguete, um, but it's not for everybody. Yeah, adapter again. <sighs> I guess I'll eventually go get it. Again, it's just a principal thing, you know. Why? Why should you have to buy an adapter for something that? And I, again, it's my fault. I have to own it. I made an assumption that because every phone I've ever owned from God knows when I've been able to plug in, if nothing else, just to listen to music. I thought that would be. I can't imagine someone taking that out. And then making you buy. It's an upsell. You know, it's it's about the money. Follow the money, boys and girls. That's the that's the naked truth. They want to sell you something else. Oh, there you go. Okay, you guys are getting your answers quite there. No, I don't know what month it's going to be. 
You know what? That's absolutely right, David. That's absolutely right. I compare my problems that I'm talking about now or issues, if you want to, you know, mellow it out a little bit. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's knucklehead stuff. Thank God these are my problems. I had real problems in the States. Especially trying to get off that ankle bracelet. <laughs> hey, Ron. You haven't seen your wife in three years. Buddy, I don't know. I don't know. If I had to guess, I would say when the majority of all the populations have been vaccinated and the countries finally say enough's enough, we need some money. We need to travel. That's why I'm looking forward to opening up another channel with my friend because we're going to get into this kind of stuff and I'm just going to really tee off. Here I keep it down. You know, I tamp it down. So I don't want this to be a channel of politics or religion or all that kind of stuff. But I do um, I do want to have another channel. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I don't think there's anything coming here. Uh, the last I heard, there wasn't a ban, but there was a warning not to come here because of the outbreaks. And now I'm hearing India's getting, of course, who wants to go to India? Not me. Good morning, Michael. Well, there you go. Willie, if, if you're listening on your radio, says, I met my partner online and we talked for a year before we met, five hours a day often. I never sent her a penny before we met. And even after the only time I sent money was when her son was in the hospital. Well, Willie, that's the way that I think that it should go. Now, I think that there's nothing at all wrong with the long distance relationship. You know, who knows who your cosmic partner is out there um, or your soulmate? Isn't that interesting kind of concept? Uh, Seven billion people. And out of them, who you end up with. And you ever wonder if there's that perfect person that's who knows where in the world that's just like your soulmate? I think about those kind of things. Is there a person that is like the perfect? I'm sure there is. Uh, where her and I are a perfect, perfect, no disrespect to me, but the perfect, perfect match. Um, and wouldn't it be cool if you could, if you could find her or him? There you go. See, Ron had success with that. Then I visited for 10 months and since then I've sent her money regularly. Well, that's a whole different, yeah, that's a whole different, um, deal. I mean, you've met the person, you've seen it. You've seen the situation, you know what's going on, and you've made the decision that you're going to send her some money to do whatever, then that makes a lot more sense than just sending money to a stranger. Because, you know, you might talk to somebody for an hour. What are they doing the other 23 hours? What are you doing the other 23 hours? When a penny is in love, she will work and try to support you. Um, I don't know about the work part, um, but I find May to be very supportive of me. And May does work, by the way. She does work. She's always worked. Um, she was working when I met her. And then um, after about three or four months, she decided to start a YouTube channel and, and, and make an income. And the reason why was she was standing on her feet for 12 hours a day or more, working with her sister, her older sister, not Risa, doing catering. So when we were first together, May would disappear for a couple of days because she'd stay at her sister's boarding house. And they would have like two events of catering that they would do. They worked for a company. And since then, with the COVID and all that, that all shut down. So um, she went online. So I got to agree. Um, 
I don't know about if she will work, but um, she won't. If she loves you, she won't abuse you. In other words, abuse your wallet. Try to save you money. Yeah, um, to me, the, the high rises are just confining. When I in the seventies, I lived in Lindale, California, and I used to park underground, and I would take an elevator. I think it was three or four stories. The apartment complex I lived in. And you walk down this hallway to my apartment and it was like going through a hotel corridor. You know what I mean? And it was just, it wasn't dark and dank or anything. It was a nice enough place, but it was just always kind of a weird feeling. And um, I guess I'm a little claustrophobic. I don't know. Maybe that's the issue. Um, it just seems like an awful lot of work to get home. You know, you got to stand there and wait for the escalator or elevator. I mean, and, um, and get in and wait for the floors. I guess I'm just getting impatient. I need my own private elevator. <laughs> yeah. You're doing good there, Ron. Yeah. A lot of people are in that boat. They just want to get the hell out. The high rise is now being buzzed by fighter aircraft as China got pushed out of the fool's water about a week ago by the U.S. Navy. They were trying to build on a reef. I didn't know that. Friggin' China. That's right. And this is an old dog, and I need my porch. And I need to be able to get down and scream at kids to get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, if a guy was a whiz bang electrician or a whiz bang plumber, probably make a living out here. I haven't seen that. I'll watch it though. I haven't seen George Carlin in a long time since he was a hippy dippy weatherman. Toronto is crazy. I used to go there a lot when I was younger. I have family there. I think everything is getting expensive. Yeah, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. That's pretty much been applicable all month. All right. As usual, I am not going to get to all the comments. But May's waking up. So I'm going to sign off, kids. I wanted to come in and say hi. I wanted to come in and complain. And I wanted to make all of you listen to me bitch and moan for about an hour and a half. Hey, I like them apples. <laughs> and then I got the car story coming up. I haven't gotten there yet, have I? Upland Dave's in the house. Let's see. Let's see if there's anybody that I have. A lot of people are repetitive here. Yeah, India's getting clobbered. I thought that India would be one of the hardest hit places when this whole thing first came out because it's so uns unsanitary and so loopy. Um, but now it's finally happening or it's now it's finally being reported but um it seemed like the united states which is all clean and hygienic and all that good stuff um got hammered and i never heard anything about india and i thought wow india you know because the open sewage and all the people and um everyone i know that's been to india has gotten sick um from food poisoning or water poisoning. And it just seems like such an unsanitary place and so crowded. So that was that was kind of a that was kind of a shocker to me in the beginning. And I feel very bad for it now that they're getting hit. But I got the feeling that's gonna be a bad run. All right, so listen. Thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry I didn't get all your comments up on here. So we'll leave it on this with Jerry Nichols is saying have a great day. Let me wish that to all of you. And remember, guys, be nice to each other. Okay?
I'll see you next time.